Welcome to Private Club Radio, your weekly source for industry education, news and discussion. Broadcasting from Tampa, Florida, ladies and gentlemen, here is your host, Gabriel Aloisi. Well, I'm super excited for this morning's guest, Frank Vane of the McMahon Group. We're going to talk about how clubs will need to evolve here as we come out of the COVID-19 crisis. We'll talk about how clubs are changing their operations, how clubhouses may actually change their architecture, and much more. I'm also super excited to announce the Membership Marketing Academy. It's the new online learning that I have launched this week. And I've got two classes ready for you to take if you're ready to build your membership, if you're ready to retain more members, or if you're ready to attract the right staff and get A players on your team. I've got courses at the Membership Marketing Academy waiting for you. Now, these are the same education sessions that I've given around the world that I've wowed crowds with that people pay me thousands of dollars to travel to their organizations to hear, and I'm offering them now to you at a ridiculously low price so that you or your membership committee can get the tools they need. I want to see clubs succeed. I know we're all in for some tough times here as a lot of our businesses have taken a huge hit and I want to see this industry thrive. So that's why I've decided to put all of my best knowledge out there online for you to take as an e-course. If you're ready to start learning, simply go to privateclubradio.com slash academy and you can start learning today. I'll also put a link to that in the show notes. You can easily click on it as well. Well, joining me once again here on Private Club Radio, Frank Vane, president of the McMahon Group. Frank, how are you doing through this whole crisis? Doing well. It's been a, been a different lifestyle. As uh, as you know, I, I spent a lot of time on the road and that's uh, I've, I've been home now for about seven weeks. So that's been a, a real personal change in lifestyle. And uh, uh, and so, uh, but, you know, all safe and sound and kind of enjoying that. And it's been a good time to reflect and research and plan. So it's been a, it's been has some benefits, too. Yeah, yeah, you got to you got to look at the the bright side of a lot of these situations. Got to spend a little bit more time with family. I would have been taking a lot more trips, that sort of thing. So it's true. Right. Um, so how about St. Louis locally? What's the the current status of clubs in in the Midwest there? Well, we've been uh, fairly active. Uh, uh, St. Louis and St. Louis County and and uh, the area around here, uh, golf has been permitted uh, throughout the uh, uh, throughout the period. So. Uh, uh, and it's very, very active. Uh, I belong to a club with 36 holes of golf, and it's typically uh, we don't have to think very hard about getting on the course usually. And uh, now you look at the tee sheet, and it's uh, quite full. Uh, there's been, uh, I think, record levels of play. Uh, the club's done a nice job with takeout food. Uh, it's been very active. They've provided a nice value with that. Uh, people have been very pleased with that. And then uh, – they're easing the restrictions here in the area. So our club started last week with, uh, uh, if you go play golf, they've got some outdoor cooking going and that sort of thing, which is sort of, again, a form of takeaway that you can, uh, you know, you take outside the clubhouse and, and all that. So uh, our clubs are pretty active. We've had nice, uh, it's actually weather-wise, it's been a nice April too. So uh, so they've gotten up and running and uh, been been pretty active. Obviously, on the other side, all you know, of course, all events are canceled and outings and revenue issues that they're that they're facing, and all having to you know sort of really you know, think through that and think how they'll how they'll deal with those side. But I think they're doing a good job of, of uh, engaging the members and having good activity. I know you had some thoughts on you know what happened in the last quote unquote crisis back you know when the economy you know took a downturn in the two thousand seven two thousand eight. What were some of the lessons we learned from that? And what are some of the, the things clubs should be doing so that we don't make some of those same mistakes? Well, I, it, you know, it's, it's important to, to, you know, we're club boards and, and uh, you know, and a, lot, a lot in the way, uh, you know, members themselves are pretty action-oriented people, you know. And so they, they tend to see a, a crisis or a challenge and they, they want to solve it very, very quickly. And, you know, that's, that's human nature and particularly for the kind of, folks who are in clubs but unfortunately that can often lead to mistakes and and you know when we look back at 2007 8 9 um, the clubs that were uh, thoughtful understood their brand their position maintained their initiation fees uh, 
maintained a member focus, uh, really understood that, you know, frankly, it's a private club. They, they aren't for everyone. Um, and, you know, they're, they're trying to operate at the upper end of the luxury of you know, the, the hospitality scale. And so actions of cutting initiation fees, sometimes they even sold multiple dues level. Let's have new, new members come in, pay, pay uh, lesser fees, uh, uh, you know, all the way to having events and chasing other kinds of, you know, non-traditional revenue and those sorts of things, things that ultimately damage your brand and are hard to turn around when you come out of it. And so, you know, what we're really trying to coach clubs is take some time. And then we're not talking about, you know, developing a complex and comprehensive strategic plan, but think strategically as you look at the coming season and, and make sure that you understand who you are and why you're going to operate irregularly you want to always have in mind what's the quality of what we're doing how consistently can we do it what's the value that we're offering to our members and keep those watchwords in play and 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 accept the realities of what you have to deal with and not try and shoot from the hip and all of a sudden we're going to solve this this week this is going to be an evolving process be thoughtful and be mindful as you go through that and i think you'll have a much better outcome yeah, that's great advice. And I, I, it's been nice to see that clubs weren't, like you said, weren't, ha, I haven't seen too many clubs slashing fees or, or dues. Uh, it's been good to see for the most part. I've seen a couple of instances of, of, of clubs relaxing some rules, uh, maybe letting people go on a bit of a hiatus, something like that. But that's been a few and far between. I think, I think the overwhelming uh, majority, you know, understood that, Hey, you're an owner of a, of a club and you know, this is your responsibility too. And we're, we're all in this together. So that's been great to see. What well, that's a great word. I mean, that's the owner is, I mean, and that's where you really see the separation, the, the clubs that have a culture and a style where the members do think of themselves as owners, far different from those clubs that think of I'm a member, I'm a renter. And therefore they adopt all these commercial practices and all these kinds of things that, that undermine that owner mentality. And yeah, I, I agree with you. We've not seen big fallout in membership or that uh, across clubs. So, so far people are sticking in there. And, uh, uh, but you know, that, that's a great watchword. Uh, always encourage your members to think about owners. We are in this together. We'll get through this and figure it out uh, in, in that manner and, and, and not adopt these, uh, you know, short term and, and contradictory practices. Yeah. What do you think some of the long lasting effects of this will be? What will some of the changes that, that were, were done during this time that will be, will we be permanent down the future? Yeah. You know, it's uh, it will be interesting. I, I, I think the, the, the things we're seeing and, and, uh, and, and uh, reading and researching and getting feedback from, from management and, and members themselves Um you know, the, the, the whole notion of, uh, you know, from the COVID period, people are, uh, they've slowed down uh, in terms of, uh, of lifestyle. Uh, the whole sort of work from home and flexible scheduling is a big part of it. Um, the, you know, obviously a, a, a near-term uh, desire for safety and security. Um, those kinds of issues are going to be paramount on, on members' minds, and you want to work towards those. I think if you look at the current home, right, we've, we've turned our homes now into we live there, we sleep there, now we're working there, educating cool teachers children there. there, exactly, you know, <laughs> all those things are happening. And when we think about the club as the home away from home, I think you're going to see, again, more of those practices. I think a lot of people are going to like aspects of the lifestyle that they have. Um, so therefore they may be going to their club and so that the club that has, you know, drop in spaces, Wi-Fi cafes, the ability to do some work and do some things that way, as well as recreate and socialize. I think those elements are going to stick with us for a long time. And so just as our houses change, we think our clubhouses need to change in ways that reflect that near term pretension, formal dining, stuffy, all those things that were frankly kind of on their way out anyway tend to be accelerated in these kinds of environments. People want to be relaxed, casual, and fun, and really think about their club as a sanctuary where they can enjoy that. Do you think we've seen the last of the club buffet? Oh, I, I, I'd say so. Yeah, dining is going to be, you know, we're, we're really kind of focused in on upscale casual. Um, you know, that's really, and, and I think the opportunity for clubs is, you know, you always have that, uh, clubs always talk about their tradition, and the idea is to sort through what's a, 
what's a value and what's a real tradition and what's a bad habit, right? And so uh, clubs often maintain things that are frankly bad habits. And so uh, this is a chance to rethink some of those and dining had already been moving into a, a whole different platform. And this is gonna give the opportunity to rethink about that in ways uh, to, to, to be more casual. Probably takeout's gonna, you know, maybe a thing of the future. While it's still regarded from a tax status as a non-traditional in income, uh, uh, organizations like the National Club Association and others are trying to get that change. Members are probably gonna like that as a feature, um, and it also sets them up for, as we say, Wi-Fi cafes and and uh, self-service sort of environments, uh, quick casual settings. I, th I think those are here to say, and you'll you'll certainly see in this year, um, you know, uh, you know, uh, cutlery and, and and takeaway foods and things like that. Clean is going to be the the desire, not so much service and formality. Yeah, I, I, we were doing a um, we've been doing these private club leader roundtables weekly with with some of my folks, and I know one of the one of the subjects that was brought up will that clubs may have a chief uh, COVID-19 officer moving forward potentially where they're responsible for making sure that things are cleaned on the hour, you know, almost like you'd have a, a, a list in the bathroom of who, who cleaned it last. I mean, there'd be a checklist for everything. So. Well, we're talking about really setting up a um, medical task force uh, yeah. that you would take a, you know, form a committee, just like all committees and clubs, it can be, uh, you know, uh, to provide some guidance and have some members serving on that and also have some staff. The big thing we're focused on is that we really, we're not going to be able to get that member experience right until you make the staff comfortable right. and secure and safe and all those sorts of things. So really focusing on them and having them a voice and uh, having, giving them a voice in that, in that committee. And so by forming that committee, like all committees, you'll get a touchstone, you'll get some information. What do we want to do here? And what's the style of the club? Because clubs are going to have a, a regional difference. The age profile of your membership is going to make a difference. All those factors are going to come into play. And so that committee can reflect that. And on the other side, management and the board can broadcast to the membership that we have such a group in place. And they're thinking about you. They're thinking about this experience and build that confidence. We've got to build confidence among people to get them out, right? And, and we see that as the great advantage for clubs. We can control the environment. We can emphasize that, you know, I, I think we control access, maybe one entry. Uh, you're coming in, we're, you know, could be taking your temperature. We're certainly taking, you know, your name and your phone number for contact tracing. Um, we're, we're, you know, taking out seats in the dining room. We're not concerned that the dining room is going to be half its size than what it was because dining is not a commercial venture for us anyway. It's an engagement tool. So clubs can more readily adapt those practices that are be very difficult if you're a, a commercial restaurateur to shut down half your tables and, you know, people aren't going to pay double the price. So the economics of that are be very, very difficult for them. Clubs where this was already a kind of a lost leader, if you will, or as you say, a, a, you know, a social tool, they can modify that dining platform and be quite successful. And they're going to have to emphasize the, the, the tactics that they are using and make members comfortable to come back. Yeah. I, I also love that, you know, clubs taking initiative with the, you know, virtual events and things like that. And I think yeah. we'll see a lot more of that where, hey, you can be at the club on a Friday night, but if you're traveling, if you're a businessman, you know, in another city or businesswoman, I should say as well. Um, you'll be able to take part in that event virtually. I think that that's that those are some of those good things again that are coming out of this. Now, you guys started off in the McMahon Group really as an architectural firm, and so I'd love to hear from you. I mean, do you think that the um, clubhouses will, from a design aspect, are you starting to think of new ways that uh, clubhouses will look in the future as we go forward? We are, yeah, absolutely. You know, near term, it'd be interesting to see. You know, when. When the events could come back, right? Uh, you know, certainly in near term, uh, I think you're going to look at 2020, 2021, as a lot of this event space that clubs have is to repurposing that to have it member space. That's where you can come up with a Wi-Fi cafe. Uh, again, you, you know, you can look at ways to do that. I was reading some regulations from the state of Rhode Island yesterday. They're going to let you have a wedding for 50 people. Uh, from now through August, and then they're thinking that in August, if things are going well, you might be able to have 100 people. 
Mm. Right. So there's a lot of clubs sitting there with two and 300 person ballrooms that are going to be pretty vacant for a while. Um, and so uh, I think you'll see a diminishment of that. And the new business model, at least near term anyway, is stressing the member focus. And so that's why when you think about that clubhouse now as the home away from home clubhouse. And so it, it can do all those things of you know, families, children, uh, dining, uh, work from, you know, remote work, et cetera. Those are all things that you'll look within the facilities there. Not if you've seen it, it was a client of ours. We did the master plan for it. Um, and actually the plan's been, was developed uh, pre-COVID, but Carmel Country Club in Charlotte just announced their master plan next last week and the improvements that they're doing. The whole lower level of that clubhouse, I would say, Panera, no disrespect to Panera, but that would probably be, you know, a step down from what they're describing. But in a way, it's a Panera. Um, it, it'll be a counter operation. You'll go up and get food. They'll bring that food to you through a flag system or or that. That that leads out to an outdoor patio that's very casual and, uh, you know, a whole indoor outdoor look to that. So um, it, it's a way for them to provide a different style of dining and, and frankly, going to turn out to be quite prescient given the changes there it'll be absolutely something that uh, you can you, you'll see as a new operating platform for clubs yeah that's that sounds like a winner for sure i'd love to see more of that rolled out and again i think clubs they're uniquely positioned um, especially in a world of social distancing a place where you can actually let your guard down a little bit i mean not not from a safety right. perspective but you know, to have some of those social interactions that you're missing because we're all living virtually right now. We're going to be dying to get back into our clubs very soon. Well, uh, what's members new have that relationship with their staff, right? So right. that's a, that's that's different. We you know we care for a lot of members. Frankly, your your staff members are as important to you as any of your friendships and the uh, fellow members, and, and and that you would. So we care about yep. Chris, the bartender, and all that. Chris, the bartender, also cares about you, so he's not going to come to work when he's sick and those kinds of things, right. you know, and we can control that. And that's why we say really, you know, clubs, you know, should be celebrating that. It's maybe not been politically correct in the last, you know, decade or more to be talking about a private member enclave and all those kinds of things in a, in a kind of a globalist style world, but privacy and, and exclusivity is going to be in certainly for the near future. And clubs will be well served to do that. The clubs that have always had that member focus have been the most successful anyway. And the ones that have chased commercial business and all that, holding on by their, you know, their fingernails anyway to to make that happen. This will give you a time to rethink that and really go back and what do your members want? How do we make them comfortable? How do we get them out to the club? And how do we keep the staff uh, safe and, and, and providing services for them? Absolutely. So it could be a good time to look at your strategic plan. Let's talk about how the McMahon group uh, can help clubs out there with their strategic planning. Well, that's it. I, we're going to talk about, uh, you know, kind of our focus this year is what we're calling refresh and reset. Uh, and so that, again, the notion there is to refresh your strategy. Uh, think about that. And again, not to, not to think about some complex and overly burdensome strategic plan. Think about what, you know, clearly what are your core values and what do you need to do at the, at the club there and, and then have that inform this new operating model that you're going to, to provide as a club. So getting the leadership to gather around first and talk about those kinds of things, give management then the tools they need, the information they need to go out and modify operations accordingly and put your programs together that way thoughtfully. So part of that can under, you know, in, in, include things like, uh, a short targeted member survey, what Mr. Member would make you comfortable in coming to the club, what sort of protocols do you want us to have, which will have the ability to give you data and information about what they really care about, and also show the member again you're concerned about them. Same thing with staff, staff surveys, what's going to, what do we need to do to make you comfortable and come to work to, to do that, get some good, you know, kind of quick information that way. Think about how you would apply that information within the context of your club and then roll out your operating plan and really look at this like, you know, seasonal clubs go through this all the time, right? They, they shut down at the end of of season as a summer club or that sort of thing and has to go uh, come back out of this for the new year. Really think about this as a, a fresh start for everyone and come out of this just like a seasonal club would reintroduce yourself to your members reintroduce your membership to your new policies and practices 
and get people together and get them up and running and feeling, you know, comfortable, safe, and and ready to go. We, we as you say, we see from what's happening in golf out there where golf is being played. I think record levels of golf are being played. <laughs> right. So uh, people are ready to get to it, you know, and then figuring out how you can do that and, and, and really celebrate that. It's, uh, uh, you know, could be in every opportunity, right? Every crisis has opportunity and, and it's going to present some opportunities for us on the club side. Absolutely. Well, definitely want you guys to uh, check out the McMahon Group website. Very simple, mcmahongroup.com. We will link that here below in the show notes. Frank, I appreciate you coming on Private Club Radio with us and sharing your wisdom, sir. Gabe, always great to talk to you. Thanks for all you're doing for clubs, your roundtables and everything this. This has been a great source of information for everybody through this period, and we're glad to be part of it. So thanks, thanks for allowing us to be here today. Well, that's going to wrap things up for this week on Private Club Radio. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for spending your time with me. I appreciate every minute I get with you. I hope you have an incredible week. Enjoy your Memorial Day. And until next week, here's to your membership success. Private Club Radio is brought to you by Concert Golf Partners, helping to preserve and enhance private golf and country clubs. Visit ConcertGolfPartners.com to learn more about the recapitalization process.